to start the recording. Thank you again for joining us. Um, we were just talking about birthdays, actually, um, when you left um, to kill some time. But now that you're back, we will continue our discussion about, um, about your role at our school. So uh, just to reiterate, talk about um, where you, uh, how you got started in education and how um, you got to where you are now. Sure. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Pam Lemons, and I started out at Warner Southern College, which is now Warner University. And um, I have a degree, I have a bachelor's of uh, science in, in English. Um, I started out on the non-education route. So it was just literature in English. Um, and at that time, I, you didn't even, didn't even need to take education courses like, uh, many non-educational, well, are you guys there? Yep. We're here. Okay. Hold on. It okay. just, no worries. Ms. Hanley, are you still there? Uh, I am still here. Can you hear me? Okay. Can We're you hear good. me? Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> this is the craziest Monday ever. <laughs> Very true. Yes. Yeah, so I, I started out um, in the classroom as an English teacher, and I taught drama, speech, and English one, two, three, and four. So in the last four years, I have transitioned to this coach as a literacy coach. And that's what I've been doing um, for the last four years now. Can you tell us a little bit about what a literacy coach does for school? Absolutely. So as a literacy coach, it looks a little different in every school. But for the last four years, Mr. Ely and Ms. Clark have had me address the literacy needs mostly in our English and reading classes. And a lot of times that looks like helping with curriculum needs to, to just make sure that, um, that teachers are using the correct curriculum, um, that they're on pace and just helping it's more it's uh, Ms. Lemons, I think your video is cutting a little bit in and out. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Give it a minute here to let the... I think you can, well, maybe not. Your video is frozen for some reason. If it's if it's better for you, Miss Lumens, if you want to um, turn off your video just so we could hear the sound, it might yep. actually help a little bit. Okay. Okay. How's that? Any better? We can hear you. Yes. Okay. All right. I believe I finished answering <laughs> that question. Oh, okay. um, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it's. <laughs> we might have to redo this, Miss Haley. <laughs> this is That's okay. I'm flexible. Would you prefer to do this on a different day, Miss Lumens? It, it, it's okay. Whatever. I don't even know. When do you guys go to lunch? Um, we'll be leaving for lunch around 11.58. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're good then. We can okay. keep on going. Okay. All right. Um, so you mentioned that you work with the English and reading classes mostly. Um, now, when you're with those reading and English teachers, what are some of the things that you're talking to them about or trying to do with them to help support the students in the classroom? Right. So because 
there are many teachers like myself that don't come from an educational background when they're attending college. Um, we go over how to use literacy strategies within the classroom. And um, I like to model different literacy strategies um, and just give teachers different tools to use, um, like different tools and strategies to use to meet the needs of their students. Yeah. Um, Ashley posted in the chat, she wants to know what in specific led you to pursue the job you have now um, and leave classroom teaching? Sure. Okay. So I was also an athletic coach and it also, I believe this job and that job really go hand in hand. Um, it's just being able to be a people person and to be able to be patient with, with teachers. And because I was in the classroom for 17 years, I knew the day-to-day -day struggles, just like we're seeing today. Mm -hmm. I mean, th the main thing in education is, is to me, uh, no matter what job, if it's in education or not, having a, an A, B, C, D, and E plan for every day because things are not going to go right. And it's just modeling a lot of even the day-to-day -day strategies. So um, this was just something that I felt passionate about and I wanted to help other teachers because I was helped as a brand new teacher. Uh, people mentored me as well. Yeah, um, thinking back to your time as a student, um, were there any experiences that you had um, in school that have shaped how you approach um, your job now? Absolutely. I'm going to say that I had specific teachers in high school. Um, some of my favorite classes that first of all, just got me excited for education. And those were the classes that at, at the time we were still, most classes were still in rows and you were still raising your hand to answer questions. And these were the classes that we were working in small groups. And, you know, that was before most of the kids were born that are in your class. Well, all of the kids were born in your class. Um, and I think those are the people that showed me what I wanted education to look like in my own classroom. Um, what are some of the easiest parts of your job and what are some of the hardest parts of your job? The easiest parts of my job would be just conversing with, with teachers. Um, I like to be a problem solver. I enjoy helping people. It's, I enjoy being a fixer. So it, it comes naturally to have a conversation with, with teachers and see, Hey, how can we help you become a more effective teacher? Um, the most difficult parts of my job would be time management. Uh, for instance, this morning I was called into testing and I was supposed to have collaborative planning with all of my reading teachers. So just send, you know, it, it, things happen spur of the moment and we're a discretionary unit. So one day I'm running a planning meeting the next day or the next 30 minutes, I might be covering a class or a duty area or campus induction where we're welcoming um, new teachers. So I guess that's also kind of a, an advantage too. I, I like having different things day to day. But managing that, like as far as like your time, like where you are, that's a difficult or a challenge for you. Absolutely. Just because sometimes I won't know until five minutes before I'll get a call on the radio that, hey, we need you to watch a class or do a duty or go to testing. 
Yeah. So it's kind of uh, hard to plan for. Hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, if you could change one thing about our current system of education, what would it be and why? I th what always pops in my mind is I think we should keep the FSA, but I think that things need to be modified. I don't think it should be the end all. I think it should take into consideration the student as a whole. I mean, we say that we don't have one size fits all education, but we do. Mm -hmm. And I just, so I would say that, you know, modifying the FSA, I would say modifying um, the class limit. I think that when I go into my reading teacher's classrooms, and we know that they have struggling reader or striving readers, excuse me, um, and they're teaching 30 kids. It, it's next to impossible mm -hmm. to, to do that. So those are two, two big ones for me. Um, you think classes should be smaller, like students should have more one-on-one -on -one interactions with their teachers? I, th I think they should be smaller, even a, a cap of 15 students. But then I think teachers need to be kept at a high standard as well. As, and I, I do like that they have done away with tenure. Um, for students who don't know what tenure is. Um, Sorry. After, no, yeah, I, I, and correct me if I get it wrong. Um, but teachers who are in the field for a certain period of time, they can, um, they basically stay, they can stay and they won't be fired for any reason. Is that how that works? Yes. Yeah, so tenure says that after a certain, um, it used to be after a certain number of years, it would become very difficult for a principal to be able to um, let a teacher go and they would have to have so much documentation that it almost becomes, you know, it, it just doesn't happen. And I don't like that. I mean, because you're either growing and, or you're not. And when you stop growing, education is a field like the like the medical field, you have to always be improving. You have to always stay up with the times. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, <clears throat> uh, students, uh, I know Ashley has asked a question. Do you guys have other questions you want to ask Ms. Lumens uh, before we finish up with her? give everybody a chance to type their questions in the chat. Um, I have a question for you. This is my last okay. question for you, uh, Ms. Lumens, while I'm waiting. Um, as far as with the new year, 2020, COVID-19, how, how have you had to change or be flexible or adapt what you do every day to fit um, the procedures and stuff that we have to do with, um, with this new year? That's a great question because when we have our, our uh, literacy meetings each month, we talk about this every time because every school looks, it's so different for every school. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I have said this year, I feel like I'm managing more than anything. Um, last year, I would be in and out of classes and helping teachers and this year it's from one moment to the next it, it's just so different um i'm doing less class visits because we want to you know not introduce new people mm -hmm. uh, i'm not doing 
pullouts like I had in the past, because again, we want, you know, kids to, to stay with their, their teachers, things like that. So it, it looks so different this year and I'm hoping it will, <laughs> it will go back to quote unquote normal, but I, I really don't know that that's going to happen anytime soon. So this just might be, uh, ev- like I said, every time we meet, we, the literacy coaches talk about what they're doing um, just to address the needs of our students and of the teachers. Yeah. But, but I would say on a day to day basis right now, I feel like it's more management and what can I do for you? How can I serve you? Can I make copies? Do you need a bathroom break? (laughs) You know, it's simple things like that Mm -hmm. because teachers will tell you they're overwhelmed. Yeah, definitely. Um, Chase wants to know, uh, do you believe that all classes should involve some sort of interaction with the environment outside of the classroom? Now, Chase, are you talk? Are you referring to? Do you mean like in some type of project outside of class? Are you referring to? I, I guess I don't exactly know where you're going with that. Uh, for me, um, like my question, I guess, would be like, I have a big issue with classrooms and school just being indoors all the time I feel like natural sunlight natural grass that helps and contributes to student learning and student (laughs) help totally agree so uh like that's basically the question like do you believe like more classes should involve some sort of activity even if it's a project an activity whatever it could be classroom instruction where we're just going out there somehow learning about something new if it's we're reading an essay or we're reading a prompt, read it outside, do it under a tree, have light, have sun, something. Okay, Chase, I see where you're going with that. And yeah, I appreciate that. And as an English teacher, that's something that I, I tried to do, um, especially when we would work with any kind of poetry or, or novels. And I think that is important, but if, you're also trying to get into the education world. Now you have to start worrying about liability. Mm -hmm. And while you have some students that need that natural sunlight, there's other students that number one, they might um, have accommodations and they might be ESE and they need to have a structured environment where they always go to the same seat every day. And if they're going to some place that's not their classroom, that could impact the way that, that they behave that day. Or it could be that you have uh, on the liability side that you have students that are um, allergic to bee stings and now I'm taking them outside or they're allergic to grass or weeds. or So I totally agree with you, Chase. I think it's important kids are outside but you also have to be aware of the risks as an educator and just go through the proper channels and and that's knowing your students as well once you build those relationships with your students you know which classes you can take outside um or maybe there's a student that might go to another class that day because you know that they hate the outdoors. So, yeah, but I appreciate that question. All right, got you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Chase. And Israel asks, what was your driving force to continue, I'm assuming it means uh, to continue in education, Israel? Or to continue her education, in education? Yeah, what was your driving force Uh, to continue in the field of education? Well, like I said, um, I came in from what I call 
straight English from a literature background, and I just have this absolute love of literature, and that's something that I wanted to share, you know, with other with other students. Um, also, I've always wanted to be. I played collegiate basketball, and I wanted to coach while I um, high school teams, and um, this just was a great way to be able to do both at once. So, and um, it's something that I absolutely love. Um, to rephrase in a different way, maybe to, to get a different answer here, on your toughest days, right? When you're, you know, like, like today, <laughs> when we're struggling the most to do, um, to, to make learning happen, um, what is something that you try to remember or keep in mind when you're just like, man, this is so hard. You know, I, I could just quit. You know, what do you what do you try to remember when when you have those really hard days or challenging days um, to keep yourself uh, motivated to keep going? Gotcha. Sorry, I took it a totally different way. Um, I think. It's so cliche, but. You know, this is true as well. When you have those relationships with kids, you know kids need you. And I know teachers need me as well. And I think sometimes it gets hard, um, but you just remember tomorrow's a new day. You know, what we're doing, our paycheck may not say we're making the biggest difference, but we are, and we know we are. Um, it just feels good to help people. So remember, tomorrow is an, is a new day, Chicken Little, and uh, <laughs> it's all going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is all going to be okay. Um, any? Uh, that's all. I, I, that's all the questions I have, and it looks like uh, those are the only questions we have from the students. Do you have any? Um, what are some words of wisdom that you might give? We have students in here, by the way, who are freshmen all the way up to seniors. We have all different levels in here. Um, what would be some words of wisdom you would wanna leave these students with as they're moving forward with their future? Okay, I think it would be, be true to yourself and look deep within yourself. What is it that you're really passionate about? That's what you want to do with your life. Because if you truly care about something, you're going to do well with it. And it doesn't matter what your paycheck says. You're going to be helping people and you're going to be helping yourself. So be passionate. Thank you so much, Ms. Slomans, for joining us um, and sharing your perspective uh, and your uh, information about your role. It was really great to have you. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you, guys. I, yeah, th and I'm sorry we had technical difficulties. Uh,